Today, let us talk about yet another community that has become synonymous with business in India. To be honest, saying synonymous with business would be an understatement. This community has been and is still the face of businesses in modern India. I'm talking about the Parsis. For a community that accounts for just 5 in a million of India's population, the Parsis have given us folks like top nuclear scientist Dr. Homi Baba, world-class musicians Zubin Mehta and Freddie Mercury, and India's many leading business houses such as Tata's and Godrej. With respect to all these successes in different spheres, they became a real force to reckon with in entrepreneurship and trade. Hi folks, I am Raj, co-founder of Stoa School and in this video, I'll be talking about the Parsi community of businessmen. The name Parsi comes from Farsi, the language spoken by their ancestors back in Iran. Parsis follow the ancient religion of Zoroastrian where they pray to fire and other elements of creation. After the fall of the Sasanian Empire in Iran in the 8th century, Zoroastrians had to flee their homeland to escape the Arab invasion. These refugees took to sea and reached Sanjan, a port of Gujarat, which was ruled by King Jadav Rana. According to the legend, the refugees and the king did not know each other's language. So the king's men showed the refugees a glass full of milk as a metaphor for how populated they already are. The high priest of the refugees asked for the glass full of milk and mixed a spoonful of sugar in it to demonstrate how they will adapt to the culture of this new land. King Jada was impressed and allowed the tribe to settle in villages on a few conditions like the women will have to wear Indian clothing and all of them will be required to learn the Gujarati language. A millennium later, those villages gave us the business houses of Tata, Shapurji Palonji, Wadia, Godrej and Poonawala to name a few. Parsis gradually moved out of the village in Gujarat to the port city of Mumbai for better opportunities and pioneered international trade with China and Burma in the 18th century. In 1736, Lavji Wadia founded the Wadia Group to build ships and ports for the East India Company. Decades later, they found unprecedented success in textile with Bombay dyeing and Britannia, the biscuit company. In 1868, Jamshedji Tata laid foundation for the gigantic Tata Empire. Jamshedji started with cotton trading and spinning, which began the cotton mills era in Bombay. The man has been rightfully conferred the title of the father of Indian industry. Palonji Mistri founded Shapoji Palonji Group in 1865 as a construction company. The company has created some of the most remarkable structures for Mumbai like the Bombay Stock Exchange Building. And the Godrej Group was also founded in 1897 as a lock making warehouse. Fun fact! Sir Sorabji Pokhanwala founded the Central Bank of India in 1911, an Indian bank that could take on the British banks. The success of these titans inspired the rest of the community to move to Mumbai. And thanks to such success stories, the Parsis became the powerhouse of modern India. They led India's industrial revolution, but were also at the heart of the creation of the Indian National Congress in the 19th century to give a political voice to Indians. No Parsi story can be told without mentioning the impact that they've had in the city of Mumbai. Parsi businessmen came to the city, which was a band of seaside villages at that time, and actively turned it into the global hub that it is today. Till date, the Parsis own the most amount of land in Mumbai. Over 60,000 Parsis live in Mumbai today, the most anywhere in the world, and they have been instrumental in giving shape to the city of dreams. Fardunji Marzban founded the city's first newspaper, Bombay Samachar, in 1822. Activist Dadabai Nauruji was instrumental in founding the Bombay Municipal Corporation. And not to forget, the iconic Nariman Point is named after Veer Nariman, a Parsi philanthropist. It is also worth highlighting that the Parsi Irani food legacy that the community brought to the city. Iconic Irani cafes all around the old city serving delicacies like keema pav and berry pulao are another gift of the community to the city. So what could be the reason for this phenomenal success of Indian Parsis? In my observation, it's their constant hunt for the next big thing. Parsis didn't find success in an existing business like the Patel community did in the US. 
they pioneered new businesses like trading with China for opium in the 18th century, cotton mills in Mumbai in the 19th, and founded banks and newspapers while at it. The community always kept their eyes on the future and invested in tomorrow. Another noteworthy point is the adaptability of the community. Parsis figured out ways to succeed under any ruling class. They were the first Indian community that started sending their kids to learn English so that they could communicate and trade with the British. Until 1946, a total of 63 Parsis were knighted by the British Crown. The community maintained similar healthy relations with successive Indian governments. The younger generation of Parsis are carrying the mantle of their enterprising elders forward. A shining example of this is the Serum Institute of India, the world's largest vaccine producer, run by none other than Adar Poonawala. Various grants, scholarships and funds are run by Parsi institutions to help their younger lot. Thanks to immigration and globalization, their population has increased in Australia, Canada and Singapore. But the Parsi community is facing a challenge like none other. They are going extinct in their home. Yep, extinct. There were more than a lakh Parsis in the country in 1941. By 2011, there were fewer than 60,000. And by 2050, experts predict numbers will drop to about 40,000. The Parsi population has steadily declined by 12% every 10 years, while the rest of India's population has increased by 21%. For instance, in 2013, there were 700 deaths and only 170 births, a 13% drop from 2012. These statistics show an alarming future for this community. And against the backdrop of the situation, it is even more critical to note their significance in our nation building. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Ciao.